Hello, hello, and welcome back to our third video in this new series about learning how to make a Java 2D game together. Uh, in the last video, we implemented the game loop. And in this video, we will bring back our window. And hopefully, we're going to draw something to it as well. So let's get going. I'm actually going to start by making a new class that will contain the display object. And we'll just name this game for now. So our game will keep a display. Let's make a constructor. And if you're wondering about this character, it's a character called O in the Swedish language, and it's right next to the P. So I constantly press it by mistake. That happens. All right. so. Now, our game needs to take in the width and the height so that we can pass it along to our display. Awesome. So we want our game to also have the update method as well as the render method. and we will call these from the game loop, which means that the game loop needs to have a game. Uh, the game that it runs. Awesome. So private game game. Uh, we will now need a constructor. So let's make a game loop constructor that takes in a game. And here we'll just say that this game is equal to game. Awesome. So now we have the game that we're running. So inside of here, let's see, let's do this is the render. I don't like the ordering. So let's see what's the is it like this? Yes. So control shift and then uh, up and down arrows and you move it. I like this to be first. So let's just say game dot update. Awesome. We are currently calling update and render uh, on our game from within our game loop. Um, so let's do something. I mean, this is enough. We are creating the display objects. Let's just test that out. Let's just go to the launcher. And you see now it's very sad because it's expecting a game. Uh, so let's create the new game. Let's give it a width and the height. Let's give it the same that we did before, 800 by 600. And let's start this game. Awesome. We still get our window, and you can still see the frames per second and the updates per second back here. But this isn't very fun to look at. So let's draw something to the screen. Uh, and to do this, we have to first go to our display class because here is the canvas and we want to draw to the canvas. But there's something that we need to do first. So let's do this canvas dot create buffer strategy. So there are many videos that explains how this works. And I'll see if I can find one and put a link in the description. But the short version is that basically you have several different screens. Uh, so once you finish drawing to one screen, you then show that screen and you begin drawing on another screen behind it. Uh, just so there's always a backup. And what happens if you don't do this is that your, um, your game will be flickering because once it's showed an image, it doesn't have another one prepared. It has to draw it. Um, so just this is enough. Uh, two or three, it's fine. It, it'll stop flickering. That's basically what you need to know. All right, so this display also needs a render method. And I'm thinking that maybe it takes in a game. Oops, sorry. Uh, like that. Maybe it takes in a game. I'm not sure how we are going to structure this, actually. 
because that means that our display knows everything about our game. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Uh, I'm not sure that... I've seen people who pass around their graphics object and let each entity draw itself onto the graphics object. And I don't know which is better, but we're going to start by doing this and then we'll see where where we end up. Maybe you have some input. Maybe you can write something in the comment section. Um, but this is how we'll start now. Um, the display knows about the game class. So yeah. But the first thing we need to do is to use this canvas. So let's get the buffer strategy and alt enter automatic import. Um, let's get it from our canvas, get buffer strategy. All right, and then the graphics object, uh, graphics, which is the buffer strategy, get draw graphics. Awesome. And the first thing we want to do is clear our screen. Otherwise, we'll have very funky looking stuff. Um, so let's start by that. And the way we do it is that we say, first of all, we need to set the color of our graphics. So let's do black. And after that, we fill a rectangle. Uh, we start at position 0, 0, which is top left. And then we need the canvas.getWidth and the canvas.getHeight. All right. And after this, we need to dispose of the graphics, which I think has something to do with the freeing memory, basically. Uh, and then we say buffer strategy dot show. So this will bring the, um, the buffer that we drew to, to the front uh, to be viewed. So hopefully now we have a black screen with this. Let's try it. And we do not, and I know why, because I haven't called render, which is why this is gray. So let's fix that right now. Um, let's go to our, first of all, our game loop, which now calls our game, awesome. But now our game also, of course, needs to call the display. So let's render and let's pass our own state in. Let's try again. Yay, look at that, we have a black window. Um, maybe I'll stop here and then I'll make another video that renders something to the screen. Um, so if you have any input on how do you think this should be handled? I also know people pass around handlers. Like if you make a display, maybe you'll give it a handler and the handler knows about the game and the display and later the input and a lot of things. I, I don't know what the best architecture is. Um, right now, I feel like I'll probably keep most of it inside the game. And then maybe I'll just pass the game around to the methods that need to know about it. So that, yeah, I don't know. It just, it feels like the way that I'm gonna move forward, but if you have any input, then please tell me. All right, I think this will be that for this video. I'll meet you up in the next one and we'll draw something to the screen. All right, hey, do.